the events depicted in this performance are fictitious. Any similarity to any person, living or dead, is merely coincidental. These stories are based on the latest theories about the human conceptions of space, matter, time, consciousness, and all the words that were created to register the evolution of knowledge. In this endless journey, mankind seeks for the absolute truth that secretly strives, hidden, in the cords of life. Four and a half billion years ago, one more star was born in the Milky Way. The Sun. A billion, billion, billion tons of matter, at present made from three quarters of hydrogen, and one quarter of helium, converts hydrogen to helium in its core, where the temperature is about 15 million degrees, producing such a gravitational force, that squeezes it ever inward. In order to compensate this crush, the star utilizes fusion power to hold itself up. At its center, four hydrogen nuclei fuse to form one helium nuclei. Einstein's famous equation E equals M times C squared explains the release of a little energy from each of these reactions. This energy flows outward towards the sun's surface, heating the outer layers in the process and puffing the star up to counteract the force of gravity. As long as these hydrogen fusion reactions are running along, the sun will be safe from its own gravity. And we, here on Earth, can use it as a source of heat and light safely, but just for some time. Then we'll face our fate. About five billion years from now, the hydrogen at the center of the sun will all be converted to helium. Then the sun would begin to die. So the trouble would begin for the Earth. Without the hydrogen, the star has to find a new way to liberate energy and fight gravity. The helium deposits in its core can be fused into carbon and oxygen, giving off more energy outward. But only if the conditions in the core become much more extreme. To accomplish this, the sun changes radically. The core contracts and, more importantly, the outer layers swell. In its old age, the sun will bloat to swallow all the inner planets, including, surely, Mercury. The smallest planet, but with the most eccentric orbit, with its distance from the sun, ranging from 46 to 70 million kilometers, slightly bigger than our moon. Then comes Venus, a hot, hellish, volcanic planet, similar to Earth in size, mass, density, composition and gravity. But the hottest world in the solar system, it will be swallowed too. The next would be, possibly, the Earth. Even if our planet is not engulfed, at some time our bloated star will expand enough to scorch whatever life might remain on our planet's surface. The good news for mankind is, even though our star seems to be in its comfortable middle age it is, in fact, slowly heating up. Every ton of hydrogen that gets converted into helium, forces the sun to contract just a little bit, and that raises its temperature just a bit. The bad news is, life as we know it, can be extinguished, quite a bit sooner than 5 billion years. When the sun is about 5.6 billion years old, about 1 billion years from now, it will be about 10% brighter than it is now. This extra solar energy will result in a moist greenhouse effect. Until Earth's atmosphere slowly dries out, as water vapor is lost into space. This condition 
will probably signal the end of large surface life on the planet, but some marine life and simple land life forms may survive. When scientists examine computer models for a future climate, they see a greenhouse effect gone wild, similar to what happened on the planet Venus. The polar ice caps will disappear, and much of the fertile land will be flooded. As the sun's output continues to increase, so much water is evaporated into the atmosphere that even the stratosphere gets wet. Sunlight can then break apart the water molecules, allowing the hydrogen atoms to escape into space. Earth will be left with a thick carbon dioxide atmosphere, almost no water, and a scorching hot surface. No more water, no more life. One billion years from now. For now we have time. But, inevitably, our instinct of preservation leads us to the following question. Are there planets orbiting other stars with characteristics similar to Earth? NASA's Kepler mission was specifically designed to survey a region of the Milky Way to determine the fraction of the hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy that might have Earth size and smaller planets in or near the so called habitable zone where liquid water and hopefully life might exist in adequate distance from their mother stars. Since its launch in 2009, the Kepler telescope has discovered nearly 400 stars with orbiting giant exoplanets, all those orbiting a star other than the Sun. The challenge is to find planets one half to twice the size of the Earth in the habitable zone of their stars. In early 2014, the telescope found a star named Kepler 186 in the constellation of Cygnus, 500 light years away. It's a red star, cooler than our Sun, with five planets so far orbiting it. The fifth planet out is in the habitable zone, has an orbital period of about 192 days, and is quite the same size as the Earth. That's Kepler 1, 8, 6, F. The planet's location within the habitable zone doesn't ensure it is habitable. This is also dependent on its atmospheric properties, which are still unknown. Anyway, in a not so far future, if mankind manages to survive from its self-destruction, eventually we'll meet on some seashore, contemplating the moons of Kepler 186F. Nova, Nova, Terra, Terra.